pay very close attention. Look at these two clips. Which one of these lifters is building more muscle and strength on this bench press right now? Do you think you know? You're about to find out today. What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. So how'd you do? Good news or bad news? Well listen, there is no such thing as either because even if you got it wrong here, I got great news for you. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can apply exactly what I'm showing you in those clips to get stronger and bigger in the next 30 days. Because if you understand the answer to the question, whether it was right or wrong, you're gonna be able to unlock those capabilities. So let me give you another crack at it. Take a look again here and see which one, A or B, do you think is gaining more strength and size on this particular bench press? Now, if you prefer dumbbell pressing, I'm gonna give you an option for that too. Here you go. Again, side by side. Which one of these two is building more strength and size on this particular exercise right here? In fact, these guys, as always, it's putting the science back in strength. That's what we do at Athlean but more than that, we put a specific kind of science back in strength. It's physics, bitch. Actually, this is a t-shirt we have on our website if you're looking to get one yourself. But guys, physics is undefeated. It never loses because we know that physics helps us to understand a lot of the things that we do in the weight room. Force equals mass times acceleration. So if you looked at those two clips and you determined that the one that was moving faster was the one that was building more muscle and strength, you'd be right. And all too often, our focus is on M and increasing the mass and the weight that's on the bar that we're lifting without ever really paying too much attention to this right here, and that's A. And that would be the acceleration of that mass that we're lifting. And if we look at what's happening here, F is the overall force output that our muscles are feeling that can drive the overload that we're looking for to drive new muscle growth, then we know that either one of these, increasing this or increasing this, is gonna have an overall impact on that and increasing that. So why are we always so focused on this? Well, not after today's video. Because if you take those clips again, you realize the main difference between them was that in one of them, I was moving more explosively, faster on every single repetition. And by doing so, by increasing the acceleration of that mass, even though it was the same in both clips, um, having an overall increase on the force generation and output here. And this goes right back into science again, guys, because when we do this, we're getting a better recruitment and a better efficiency of recruitment of the type two fibers, which are the most capable of driving new size and strength gains, not to mention, again, showing you how to at least start to train more explosively. And what we call this type of training is compensatory acceleration training. And it's not new, guys, it goes way back. Guys like Louis Simmons and Fred Hatfield and Mel Sipp were using this technique with their athletes. And again, a very great technique for athletes because you can't always put your foot on the gas when you're trying to increase performance, especially in season. So you have to have other ways to have an impact on their force generation capabilities without always trying to add more weight to the bar. And I've talked about on this channel before methods for just hypertrophy, again, building bigger muscles. You can go the eccentric muscle damage route, but that oftentimes leaves you really sore and can impair other elements of your training. Or you could try the metabolic stress method. However, again, that's not for everybody and they don't have the mental willpower to push themselves to the, to the point that they need to to actually see benefits from that type of training. So it always comes back to progressive overload. And if we progressively overload by always focusing here without looking at this, we're kind of leaving a lot on the table. And it applies to you right here, right now. Because it doesn't matter what you're doing right now. Even if you took the same lifts you're doing exactly right now, whatever training split you're following, and all you did was focus on becoming more explosive, adding to the acceleration component of every one of those lifts, you are going to add to the overload you're creating and lead to new size and strength gains. And there are studies that show that we can see these gains in literally just 30 days. That being said, we have our own lab rat here, and his name is Jesse. And he's been doing this himself on his own deadlift. You've seen his deadlift increasingly grow, but what you may not know is using submaximal loads like he has here and accelerating them at a much faster pace has also allowed him to build this top number up. Not always having to push the pedal to the metal, as I said, but finding other ways to achieve higher totals through alternative methods. We oftentimes fall into that trap of just letting the bar sort of move through space because of the natural strength curve of the exercise. Look, even on a squat, it's most difficult to come out of the bottom of the hole, and then as we get past sort of that midway point, we might coast the rest of the way because the strength curve allows us to move that weight a lot easier. I'm saying you continue to accelerate through every single inch of that movement and that's where the real benefits lie. Now listen, maybe you were feeling bad because you got the first two tests wrong. I'm gonna give you one more test here, but I'm gonna warn you, only 1% of those that take this test are actually gonna pass it. But also remember, 70% of all statistics are bullshit, so you actually might have a chance. Here you go. Take a look at this clip here. Now, look very closely. Do you see it? 
Which one of these is building more strength and size by doing the exercise? Okay, good. Because guess what? It's a trick. And Jesse, I can't believe you, you put me up to this. I'm a trickster. So, guys, it's the same clip. All, right, all I did was replay it twice. But there's a very important point about this. When we come to this compensatory acceleration training, you are benefiting even if your weight is not perceptibly moving very fast to somebody else that's looking at it. But to you, as long as you are pushing that weight as hard and as fast as you possibly can, you're seeing the benefits. So it's not perception, but it is the intention. And as long as your intention is to accelerate that bar as fast as you possibly can against the external resistance, you're going to see the benefits of this technique. Guys, remember, when you're looking for ways in, of how to build your strength and size, especially over a shorter period of time, you have to be willing to tap into different things that you haven't tried before. Continue to do the same things you've been doing is going to give you the same results you've been getting. Sometimes you've got to look at other methods here and just simply increasing the acceleration to increase the effect of the overall force output is the way that's going to get you there the quickest. Guys, if you found the video helpful, make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up below. What else do you want me to cover? I'll do my best to do that for you. If you're looking for programs where we put the science back and strength in everything we do, you can find them over at Athens. Athenx.com. In the meantime, if you want that shirt, by the way, you can find that over at Athenx.com too. Guys, remember to click subscribe, turn on your notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.